Okay, uh, last day for chapter two, uh, last video for chapter two. So chapter two, day five, um, what we're going to look at today is how do we solve rational equations. Now for the past few days we've been working with rational expressions and now we're going to work with rational equations. And you know, what, what's the difference between an equation and an expression? An equation has an equal sign. So we're now actually going to be solving and trying to find what x can be rather than just simplifying and combining like terms. So if I see an equation, I know that my answer eventually is going to be x is equal to something. Now, on the very first day, we talked about expressions and what x can't be because, again, we don't want zero in the bottom. So even before we start solving the equation, the first thing we have to do, the first step, step one, is to identify what values of x make the problem undefined. Okay, so even before we start solving, we need to know ahead of time what x can't be at the end. And if it turns out to be what makes it undefined, then we would have to reject that answer. But we need to identify up front first what x can't be. Well, if you remember from the first day of chapter 2, we said that we can't have 0 here. And luckily, this is just x. So the only value of x that would make this bottom 0 is if x was equal to 0. So what we say is x cannot equal 0. So identify what values of x make the problem undefined. So that is this piece right there. So we're going to say right up front, even before we start solving this, we got to make sure x is not equal to 0 at the end. Because um, at the end we will check, but what we're checking for is just checking to see if, if we came up with that answer. Okay, so now, if you notice, if I erase the minus 6, this looks a lot like what we just did two days ago, adding fractions. We have to have a common denominator. Well, it's an equation, but it still has fractions that are being added. So the next thing we need to do is still find the common denominator. Well, to help me think about this, I'm going to make sure everything's written as a fraction. And my common denominator, we know from the previous work that we just did, is everything has to be represented. So my common denominator here is going to be 7x. Okay, so now, next step, make all the fractions have the common denominator. So just like we did before, we're going to go through and we're going to multiply by what's missing. Okay? So, this is missing a 7. This is missing an x. This is missing the 7 and the x. Okay. Make all the fractions have the common denominator. So, we still got to clean this up a little bit. So, 7 times 3, 21, over 7x, plus... 5x over 7x equals 7 times 6, 42x over 7x. So all the fractions right now have the same denominator. On this side, if you wanted to, you could have written them all over one fraction like we did before. It doesn't make a difference. But we have to make sure that they all have the same denominator. Now, What's really neat about fractions is if they're all over the same denominator and this side of the equal sign is equal to this side and they're all over the same denominator, the only way that that can happen is if only the top pieces were true. The only way fractions with the same denominator can be equal to each other is if the top parts are equal to each other. 
And with that in mind, the next step is to just rewrite the fraction without the denominators. Once you've made the fractions have all the same denominators, then rewrite it without the denominators. So I'm going to write 21 plus 5x equals 42x. So that just is the next piece. Just the tops. Well, that's nice and easy. Solve what is left for x. That's step 5. What I have left, I'm going to solve for x. So now I have to think of all the ways to solve. Do you see an x squared? No. If it was x squared, we want to get everything to one side and get it equal to 0. It's not x squared, it's just x. It's x to the first. It's linear, which means all x is on one side, all numbers on the other. So I'm going to take away 5x, take away 5x, and 21 will equal 42 take away 5 is 37. All right. Opposite operation, divide by 37, divide by 37. So x is going to equal 21 over 37. Last step is to check. Check to make sure the answer is not a number that we identified. Let's say that. Okay. Make sure that answer is not a number that we identified in step one that makes the problem undefined. So what do we do? We look at this answer and we say to ourselves, is that what we said that x can't be? No, x, x just couldn't be zero. Did we get zero? Nope, so that answer's good. And I'm gonna box it in now. I'm not gonna box it in though until I check it. So let's say the answer came out to be zero. And up here, the answer can't be zero. I would have to reject this answer and not box it in. And in this case, there would be no solution. Okay, so recapping of the steps. One, first, take a look at your original problem. Identify what at values of x and make it equal to zero or make it undefined. Well, when that was zero, gotta make sure our answer's not that. Second, find the common denominator. Third, make all fractions have the common denominator. Okay, so I'm multiplying by what's missing, by what's missing, by what's missing. Once all fractions have the common denominator, I'm going to rewrite with only the top pieces. Don't forget that sign, like if this is a plus, it's got to stay here. Only the tops. Now we have no more fractions. Okay? Now solve what's left for x. Make sure that this is not one of the answers we identified as being bad. Let's take a look at another problem. Okay. So let's look at solve for a. All right. So as I look at this, I first say to myself, what would make this zero? Well, if a was zero, this would be zero. If a was zero, this would be zero. So I gotta make sure that a cannot equal zero. That's step one. Common denominator. Well, I need an a and I need a two. Okay? Multiply by what's missing. 2 over 2. This has nothing missing. Okay? Rewrite with the common denominator. So I have 2a minus 4 all over 2a equals a plus 2 over 2a. I don't need to multiply that because it has the common denominator. Now we have them all over the same denominator. So now I can write just the top. So 2a minus 4 equals a plus 2. Linear, so take away an a, take away an a. 2a minus a is 1a, and so if it's 1a, I'm just going to write a. I don't really write the 1 in front. 
at 4, at 4, a equals 6. Can't box it in yet. Got to go back and ask myself, what did we say a could not be? We got to make sure a is not 0. Is that 0? No, that's 6. I can box it, circle it, whatever I want to do. Okay? One last example to look at for your notes. Look at this problem. B cannot equal, hmm, well, this isn't a fraction, so let me write it as a fraction. B, we got to make sure B is not 0. And what would make this 0? Well, if B was negative 2, then that would be 0. So we got to make sure it's not negative 2. All right, so step 1 is done. Step 2, common denominator. I got B, B plus 2. I got to have both items in here. This is missing everything, b, b plus 2. Okay. This is missing b plus 2. This is missing b. I don't need to put those in parentheses, I'm just not sure what I did. Okay? When we come back to class, next class, we will finish this problem out and we'll see what happens. Okay? So that is solving rational equations. And we know they're equations because they're problems with equal signs.